Today what I'm doing is I'm going to try and contact the ISS or the International Space Station. It's just about to fly overhead. I'm just watching it here on the tracker. It's uh, not too far away and there's actually a cross-band repeater on board. They use a Kenwood TMD710GA, I think, radio, which is on board and that serves various different purposes. But some, most of the time there is an actual cross-band repeater switched on for use and you can talk via it, which is pretty cool. So I'm using my Kenwood THD72 today and I'm also using here my uh, Arrow antenna and this is a cross-polarized Yagi antenna, three elements um, on two meters and uh, seven elements on 70 centimeters. When I say cross-polarized, just the way that the elements are mounted. So um, it's actually fed vertical and horizontal, but you've just got to move it to uh, wherever the best signal is basically that you're getting back from the satellite. So um, I'm gonna be doing that. This antenna actually comes with a diplexer in here um, that can handle up to 10 watts. So there's a single connection which goes straight into my radio. And you can see here there's two uh, feed points. There's one here for 70 centimeters and one here for two meters. So uh, these antennas are meant for uh, this kind of satellite work. And this arrow antenna is very good in the fact that it is so easy to set up. So all you do is you literally just unscrew it from the boom here and one side has a thread in it. So you've got two sections of, of one element. You just literally pass it through the boom, do it up and you do that for all of your elements and you're done. And what I've actually done is I've gone and I've marked on here which ones are which. So these are the reflector elements for the two meter side of things. Um, and then the driven element, obviously the one with the gamma match feed point here. And then I've done the same for 70 centimeters as well and then marked all the directors out. I've got the roll up um, storage pouch for it. So you just like literally unravel this and the spots all in here all for the elements. So I'm gonna plug it in and we're not too far away from the acquisition of signal from the uh, ISS. I won't see it at first because towards the south here I don't really see very too well and the uh, house is in the way but when it gets up overhead then I should be able to hear some signals. On my radio I've got some channels programmed in so I've got one channel which I transmit on so I transmit on 145 990 and I receive on 437 800. They are the two frequencies for the crossband repeater. Now I've also got some channels programmed in here that are in five kilohertz steps because of Doppler shift. So because the ISS is moving uh, over the top at a pretty fast speed, what is it, like 30,000 kilometers an hour or something? I probably made that up. I'll put whatever the real value is um, on the screen. You have to adjust for Doppler shift because as it's traveling, uh, as it's coming up say over the horizon and it's far away from you and then as it gets closer to you and travels away, it's a little bit like listening to a horn on a car that's traveling by. It sounds, it's got a different pitch or a different frequency uh, when it's a far, way away from you and then as it gets closer to you the frequency matches what it actually is and then as it goes further past you then uh, it changes again so the same too with the ISS so we're just coming now into acquisition of signal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay up 10 kilohertz higher on receive here so I'm going to start there and then as the satellite gets pretty much overhead and the closest it is to me then I'm going to switch to whatever the actual frequency is so at the moment we're doing, it's about two degrees above the horizon. It's still, I'm not gonna be able to receive it just yet. It's just my coax is getting all twisted up. Don't you love this? Trying to undo the twists out of coax, there we go. Now there is a slight tail on the repeater, so you will hear um, a, a chuff or a, or a tail. You won't hear like a beep or an ident or anything like that. You'll just hear a tail. Usually you'll hear people talking on it because um, lots of people love to kachunk it and key it up, as they do. Uh, so we're up to 10 degrees, uh, rapidly climbing. This is quite a, a long pass now. You can track the satellite. Um, the screenshot here is from n2yo.com, so you can track a whole bunch of satellites, not just the space station. And it gives you um, predictions as well, like 10-day pass predictions, so that you can tell when the satellite is about to come over. So we're looking at... 13, 13 degrees, it's starting to climb quite rapidly. Hopefully we start to get some signals soon.
You don't need a lot of power, you only need like a couple of watts. I'm only running this on the five watt scale, which is more than enough to try and get into um, the repeater. It's pretty easy to get into. You could even do it, you don't even need an antenna like this. You could do it with just a quarter wave whip or um, even just a, uh, the whip off the handheld, although that might be a little bit challenging. A quarter wave whip works well because of the high radiation angle. So it's sort of looking up more towards the sky. I've got a collinear vertical here behind me, a diamond collinear vertical, which is lower in radiation, so uh, angled, so towards the horizon. So you'll pick up the satellite very well when it's down towards the horizon, but that's not really advantageous if it's flying straight over the top of you, and that's only for a very short period of time. There it is, I just heard it key up. Oh, I just heard it again. Victor Kilo 7, hotel, hotel on the ISS. Yeah, VK7 MRS, VK7 HH, yeah, you're 5 9, got you good. Yes, uh, all good, you said, uh, 5 9 also, wasn't it? Yeah, good, good, uh, you on your SarkNet tracker, that's working well. Yes, Roger that, uh, not uh, using the Doppler, uh, just uh, changing the frequencies uh, manually at the moment. Yeah, QSL, QSL doing the same, uh, yeah, very good signal, uh, I think it's right above us now. Uh, directly above at the moment, over. VK7 HSA. Uh, QRZ, VK7 Hotel Hotel. So it's starting to decline and it's towards the north or northeast. VK2 HFA, VK7 Hotel Hotel, you're 5 9. VK2, that was in Sydney. Notice I turned the Yagi horizontal then and... Uh, Doesn't look like anybody else is on there, Hayden. Uh, VK2 HFA. Yeah, QSL, you've still got me there, Michael, over. Roger, I've still got you there. Um, how's the weather in Hobart? Uh, nice and sunny. Yeah, Roger, nice and sunny here in Hobart. Perfect, over. Yeah, QSL, Michael, QSL, yeah, uh, starting to fade, over. Down to 10 degrees now, so we're right down on the horizon, so it's pretty quick, pretty quick pass. I can still key it. Can you still hear me, Michael, over? So the first station... Uh, that I worked there is actually local, not too far away from me. Um, I can't hear them direct there, way down, um, probably about 20 or 30 kilometers away. So we talked via a moving repeater that's like 500, 400 k's above the earth. So obviously a tracker would be a lot better. Doppler, if you can correct automatically for Doppler, then it saves you having to switch channels. Make sure that you can hear first. I knew that this system worked pretty well because I um, tried it earlier on today. Give it a go. And um, I've done some other videos with the ISS. I've, I've done the repeater before. This is actually the best sort of pass that I've ever had. If you want to see those videos, then I'll pop them up on the screen.